Okay, welcome back everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning, Monday morning. So we spent a couple hours on our, making some space here. We spent a couple hours on the Society of Idea Collectors, Episode 6, using file folders. So that video should be just before this one, hopefully, if everything uploads correctly. And um, so I was going to color in a one of our books, and I guess the most requested this morning was Mythomorphia, Kirby Roseanne's, and uh, yeah, I do, I, I break the spines on them to make them lie flat, and then some of them, yeah, I'm, I'm rough on my books. So the last one I think we completed in here, we worked off and on on them, I, well this isn't the last one we completed, but, uh, and I will readjust the light when I go to color, it's, it's a, it gets a little flashed out, let's see here. Let me turn down the, turn it down just a little, the brightness. I want to get it too dark, but I got it kind of flashed out, so maybe that will work. We'll see when we go to color. Okay, so uh, this one's done. The werewolf. There was multiple parts on this, and one or two of them did not upload, so that was a shame, but... Um, this one's done. This one we're still in progress. Uh, I, I probably won't finish it on camera. I really just wanted to show everybody how to do backlight of a sunset with the snow on the mountains with some stickles, if you can see the shimmer there. So that's like um, backlit trees and, well, the light's coming from here. And then it's dark over on this side. So I just wanted to kind of do a demo on that. Let me take a sip of coffee, guys. I'm losing my voice. Uh, this one's, this side's done. This side's not. I'm not sure if I want to tie them together with the same colors or make this like a page on its own. But this one is, I did it, I stayed with uh, three main colors. The pink, the orange, and the aqua. And then the green background. So the green background could tie them together. And then all the little fairies and all the... Uh, this, the background is with acrylic paint so that the white pencil will go on top of the acrylic paint. So there's the little fairies are all in a glow. They're all in a glimmer. <laughs> what else have we done partially in here? Because I've been using kind of this one as an exam a book to do examples. And the other one, Anamorphia and uh, Imagimorphia, both of those have multiple pages partially done and fully done. Oh, and then the other thing I got to say, and I'll have to pull this them out later. When I did the, um, I did a video a couple weeks ago, a couple Saturdays ago when uh, Ustream was being like, wouldn't let us, it was just giving us fits. So I just did a recording for about two and a half hours on all the color book pages that I've completed. I left a whole shelf off. <laughs> so there's other books that I've worked in that were not in that. So I'll have to do another supplemental video on some of the ones that I did not like. Game of Thrones, I got a couple done in there. I have a couple in uh, just random books that I completely just ignored that shelf. And so there's more books that I have finished pages in that I didn't show on that. So, uh, yes, I know Thomas Kincaid. My mom's got an original Thomas Kincaid, a small one, very small one. But <laughs> she bought it back when uh, he had a gallery in San Antonio. I don't know if he still does, but uh, of course he's passed away now. But I do have the, I think, a Thomas Kincaid color book. But that's going to be, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I feel funny trying to tackle something like that just because I, there's no way you can do another artist justice. You know, there's all different ones out there like Van Gogh and Monet. And there's all different uh, where they've taken it and turned it into line art based on their paintings. You, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't see that I could do it justice. But yes, I know who Thomas Kincaid is. And good morning, Palm. <laughs> yeah, I have one of them around here somewhere, but I haven't tackled it. 
So anyway, here's another one with just kind of a wash. And I have had a couple questions. People say, well, I thought you said a wash is acrylic. Well, a wash is any kind of watered down paint, technically speaking. Um, a watercolor wash is a wash of watercolor. An acrylic wash is watered down acrylics. So when I say a wash of whichever, it's just watered down. Watered down watercolor, watered down acrylic. It's just a wash. So here's a wash of acrylic. So you can see some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. Um, a lot of times my backgrounds, I like them to be flat, solid color. But water, I like it to look watery like this. And then I did a little demo here just showing how to do some smoke out of the, you know, uh, seahorse's uh, nostrils. Now, this is not done. I'll probably darken it up closer, and I still have to do the wash in here. You know, it's I, so many of my pages are not done there for you guys to have the examples of. Um... Yeah, yeah, Thomas Kincaid's work is awesome. So anyway, um, a lot of what I'll, I do in the, like the Anamorphia and the Magimorphia, how I told myself I was going to do these three books was work on multiple pages at the same time. So in other words, I might do a wash and then start working like on this one, this castle. This is the detail compared to here is the initial start and then you can see how I started working in the orange and the red in here where this hasn't been done and then the next day I'll go on to another page <laughs> you know so what I'm doing in these books in all my Kirby Roseanne books is working hither tither and yon <laughs> so I'll just do a little bit here or there here's my spider webs with the stickles on them and um, and then go back and forth and that way I don't get tired of working on one for too long and yet I feel like I'm making progress in the book because look there's something on pretty much every page so that keeps me going even though we have so many books that we continuously go back and forth between um, I will work on them more. I'm more apt to work on them if I've got a little bit started. And I know that a lot of people can't do that. They can't jump from page to page. I have no problem jumping from page to page. <laughs> I just don't. It doesn't bother me at all to go from book to book to page. Um, here's one where we did some stamping on, testing. There's some in here where we've done stenciling on. And uh, so, yeah, this one's completed. I'll just find the few that are absolutely done, this being one of them. Uh, this one is done. We have done a little bit of this one on camera, on a video. Um, this one is done. Do I have any more done ones? This one I like to keep for a good example because this shows what it looks like with an initial wash and then gone in there with um, pencil. So for instance, here's like one of the tentacles with in the suction, the little suckers. There's with just a wash of the blue and the yellow orange and then and then when you go to put pencil on it, there's the difference. Or there's two right next to each other. So this is what it looks like with just your initial wash. And then here's gone in with shading with pencil. Just so you can see the difference. But by having an initial wash, in this case, in these books, in my Kirby books, it's I, I'm pretty sure it's almost all acrylic washes. Okay? 
um, you can see the difference between where you just start with the wash and that but what it does it gives you a base to work on you're not having to color all that with blue and then try to shade on top of it the thing about having an acrylic wash and here's the eye is done here what the benefit of having the acrylic wash on the page is your the way your pencils react on top and I and I've just pretty much used Prismacolors I mean I have other books where I've done special pencils and you know neo colors and things like that but pretty much Prismacolor but that's that's the thing about having a base of a wash whether it's a wash of watercolor or acrylic or whatever acrylic gives it just a little more tooth I think than watercolor unless you're using like real chalky watercolors um, and then you can go in and blend on top of it and get just awesome effects with half the work and if I tried to color him all blue light blue and then layer and layer of darker and darker and darker blues without having the layer of wash on it you just don't get that same tooth okay so anyway uh yeah so we're going to go back over now to mythomorphia this was the requested one i don't know what page i want to do in it yet <clears throat> this one now right here started out with an acrylic background acrylic wash and I stuck with like red green and blue did all the washes then I went back in with pencil this did take quite a while because I went over every scale there every scale here has got pencil on it but it has the initial green wash then after I was completely done shading with the pencil I took my white acrylic paint and a baby wipe and smeared clouds all over the whole thing to give it that like cloudy look <laughs> did your little puffball doodles in orange did all your little puffball doodles in orange it does make such a difference when you add the pencil on top of acrylic so um i don't know i know i've had people request the medusa and I don't know. Here's an Egyptian one. That's kind of cool. He's, you know, half lion. Like this thing. Let's see. I'm looking, guys. Have to decide. I don't know if anybody's got a preference. I really want to do... If I do a double page spread, there's no way we're getting any, you know, getting far. Lots of scale. Yeah, there's a lot of scales on it for sure. And hi, Terry, by the way. I hope you had a happy birthday. This one's got an initial wash on there. Um, this is an undersea world. Quite detailed. Now, just this werewolf alone. It probably took me four or five videos to do this. And, of course, a couple of them didn't upload. But this is many, 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 many hours of work. So I'm more about showing you guys maybe one of these dragons. I'm more about showing you the ideas than making sure I get a completed page. Okay, the sun. It's really bright right there. Maybe it's not my Maybe it's my lamp. <clears throat> Maybe one of these dragons. This one looks like fire. This one looks like water. Do you want to do a water dragon? We could do a dragon. Do the one with the green, the green and the tree. You mean the one that I half finished? This one? I haven't decided what I want to do with him yet. I don't know if I want to coordinate the colors or what. So, yeah. You know, I like the dragon. Okay, well, maybe we'll go with this dragon then. And I'll adjust the light here, and I'll zoom in on this one. Again, I don't know why. Maybe if I put another book under here, maybe that's just enough stacked up so it takes the glare off. All right, so let's see what we can do here, guys. That's pretty good for initially. 
because I don't want to get too mm. zoomed in while I'm doing the, you know, the whole thing. Um, I think that might be pretty good until we start for details because otherwise if I get it too light you're not going to see the color. Let me tilt that light shade back a little. Okay we'll go with this. Let's make sure we're focused. Whoop. Hang on. Let's <clears throat> All right, there we go. All right. You like the dragon? Okay. <laughs> so we'll work until one. Janet comes on. So we've got about an hour and a half, however far we get in an hour and a half. Um, because he's this one's in water and this one's fire, I'll probably do the background of this one a nice blue. And then, of course, the fire one, which I'm not going to do right now, I'll do maybe orange. So if the background of this one's orange, I think blue will be a nice contrast, like a nice, you know. So, all right. I think we're good. I'll take a sip of coffee and get a couple colors of paint here. I'm not sure what blue. Do I want to go with blues or turquoise? It's, could almost go with turquoise colors, right? What do you all think? Let's go with a couple of turquoise and a white to make it lighter. Okay, we'll go with, we'll start with this and then probably, I don't know, lime green? I don't know. The other one I kind of did lime green too, but that just goes well, you know? So we'll do a wash with these colors. We'll start with this. <clears throat> you often put a base of ink tints. I don't do well with large ink tints washes. I like ink tints for small areas, but like in the pop manga where I tried to do a large background with ink tints, I just didn't like the way it, it didn't blend out for well enough for me. And I, I know I don't use them enough to really... Um, you know be proficient at ink tints if y'all don't know ink tints are water soluble pencils that when they dry or when they're completely dissolved they're ink and permanent all right so i'm going to go with my americana this is um peacock teal that's uh i think the background color i'm going to do and then some white to lighten up some things and then I got Bahama Blue, which is like a, kind of a cross between a teal and a baby blue. And then I got Irish Moss. And I'll put it by the white because that way I can lighten it up if I need to. Probably a, maybe a little yellow probably would be better than white. Here. Because the white will make it washed out and a yellow will just make it lighter. So we'll go with that. We'll start with this. All right, um, let's find my brushes here. Let's pick a couple. Um, a flat one. I got some more over here that I've been using. This is a small one. And let's see. There's a nice angle. Okay. I love angle brushes, and I go through them like crazy. I just buy craft brushes, guys, for my acrylic painting. Um, I don't use expensive, nice brushes for uh, color books and, and acrylic paint, whether it's my collage, my mixed media. Anytime I'm just using my craft paints, they're just, you know, 20 for 5 bucks. <laughs> They're very inexpensive. They don't last forever. Don't get me wrong. They don't last forever, but they last long, you know, for what you're using them for. So I'm going to take a piece of wax paper to put behind the page just so I don't 
stick my pages together with paint because I'm going right up to the edge and off the edge. All right, so I'm going to start with, I always get my brushes just damp and then get all the excess water out of them. But you don't want to stick a dry brush, completely 100% dry brush in your paint because that can ruin them. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. So I'm going to start with the background. And I'm just going to, no water, I'm going to have this solid. Um, I'll probably water down in here. But the background, if it's going to be like far away, um, the water that's kind of far away. And some, you know, like I'm kind of scrubbing it in. So I'm almost doing like two coats at once. <clears throat> but some colors, if you do a flat background with them, it will take two coats. But I find that if I just kind of keep scrubbing over an area for a second, then I don't need really to go back. Now, there's little white foam, there's little dots. Man, let's see, maybe I need to zoom in another. Hang on. Um, let's see, that might be too close. Let's back out one. Let's try that. Um, see these little dots here? They're like the little water spray dots. I don't paint around those kind of things. I just paint over them and I'll go back and add my own. Okay. I just don't do it because I can I can fully put in my own little white dots. Bye, Sonia. Thanks for stopping in. And I'll get as close to the center. Of, and this is why I break the spines in my books. So I can get right up in there. And I will probably put foam, like white foam, around him too. So we'll see how far we get. So with a flat, with an angle brush, you have a flat area, a line, enough to make a line, and also a point. So angle brushes are just so versatile so if you have any questions put them in caps otherwise I'm just going to keep rolling here I'll try to stay in camera I'm going to try to get down the middle of the book first here But if you want a flat color with no variation in the translucency, then you have to have no water in your, in your paint. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go around and go all around the whole thing. Because once I get to the edges... See where it's going off on the wax paper? Once I get all the edges done, I can remove this wax paper. So let me just go all the way around the edges here. Then I don't have to worry about moving the wax paper around. And down here at the very, very bottom, I'll just worry about that in a little bit. Don't know that we'll get down there today. All right, so there we go. Now let me just move the wax paper. Thinking about getting another Roseanne's book just for practice washes this with pencil. Yeah, and and if you're, you know, if you don't know, if you want to practice something, just, you know, make you a, even if you just copy a section of a page or something just to practice on, you know, if you're afraid to use your book. But a lot of people love these books enough to buy more than one copy, right? And I know it looks a little dark, guys. Um, my hands aren't this dark, and the, actually this paint's not quite this dark. But I'm trying to keep it dark enough where the line art shows. So, for now, we'll adjust it as we go here. It 
so we'll work on it till about one when Janet comes on and we'll see how far we get I don't mind working on it again like two parts we can maybe work again on it on Wednesday depending on how far we get but I'm trying not to do too many multiple part color book pages two you know three tops I mess up. The train really wanted to color it. You messed up on the train? I ha you mean the train page in... I forget what book it is. Myth is it in Anamorphia? Or Imagimorphia? If you're talking about the train page, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about, Barb W. You're the boss of your color book. That's my motto. You don't have to color it like anybody else. I try to give you all the tips and things that I know and do. Use what you want. Don't use what you don't want. Yeah, it's awesome to use. I love mixed media in the color books. I rarely use one thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't even can't remember the last time I just used one thing, like just pencil, unless it's just a little tiny something like that's going to go in the, say, napkin journal or something. All right, let me get some of the bigger areas like this, and then I'll go in with a smaller brush. So let me just kind of pull the paint down as close as I can get with this flat brush, I mean this angle brush here. Because I can go faster if I have a little bit smaller brush. This is a little big. <laughs> Now I'm going to get a smaller brush here. So if you have any questions, this is the time to ask because I can re-chat and do this. If I'm doing watercolor, it's a little trickier to re-chat because you have to, if you want your edges to flow correctly you can't let let them get away from you but I'm doing a solid here so and the other thing I would recommend is if you are make sure my white shirt I don't know if I should be do painting in this shirt but um, if you're, if you want to get, you know, share your color book pages or just be around, you know, people in a group, there's all kinds of Facebook groups. If you want to, sorry for my hands putting a shadow there, I'm trying to back my hand up off the end of the brush here. So that there's all kinds of Facebook groups that are very encouraging and they're usually 
Now, I mean, like Jen, Reading with Pugs, she has a group that's like multi different kind of pages. If you join a group, say, like Jasmine Beckett, Bennett Klein, then, you know, you're going to post pages from their books, not like you whatever. You know, you're going to, if you're in Kirby's group or, you know, you're going to pay, you're going to post accordingly to the book if it's a specific artist that has that group, like Jasmine or Bennett Klein or whatever. But there's groups like Jen's who are like just multi different kinds of, you know, whatever kind of art, uh, color book pages that you can post whatever you're doing in it. So I want to get at least some of this background in for you before we go to another section. So what's everybody work if you're if you are color a colorist, what are you working on? I always like to ask all of us that stream and do color book pages, we always like to ask what everybody's working on. We just like to know. Inquiring minds want to know what everybody's working on. Put it in caps so I know you're answering. I know Bennett Klein's group is awesome. I don't really keep up. I mean, I don't know if Laura, does Laura still have hers? don't know since I know she's not really streaming anymore I know she was still gonna make videos but so I haven't really kept up with Laura's on Facebook I mean I, I try to watch all their videos that I subscribe to so Jillian's working in Zimia Snova and try to perfect not get shine in your pages shine on your pages art mingle I'm not sure what shine you mean Terry is hanging pictures <laughs> yeah you're just moved uh, Subin is in the Wizard of Oz and Romantic Country Karen B is in Maria Troll looking for friend Daisy is Celtic spirit Karen's also myth of Morphia uh, Muse is, she's in about four different things at once, yeah. May is in Fantasia. I know I need to get back to Fantasia as well. She still has a Facebook group. Yeah, I figured she's, I think I'm still in her Facebook group, but I don't, I'm just not, like, keeping up with it. I left a lot of, uh, I left a lot of color book groups because I just wasn't ever there. I never contributed, I wasn't talking, you know, I mean, I'm still in Bennett Klein and Jen's, but I, I, you know, you only have so many, so much time, and so you have to, you know, choose the areas where you're going to feel you're contributing and, you know, too shiny when coloring with pencils. Oh, are you burnishing? You're bearing down too much, Art Mingle? Jane is watercoloring. I don't know that one. Vivi? Vivi? Sakor? I don't know that one, Jane. Um, <laughs> Kmore's working in her mind map, idea collecting playground. Um, Shaleen's starting a buddy coloring in Secret Garden. You better get that crack a lacking then before October because you got to do the. Uh, <laughs> you're doing Jasmine too, aren't you? Muse is Mythmorphia, Bennett Klein Dragons, Shakespeare Country, and Where's Wally? Oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do one of those. <laughs> that would be tiny. Uh, Kberg is Inky Garden in the Mysterious Library, Mythmorphia, and Fairy Tales. Palm is flipping and petting all of her new books. 
What's your favorite new book you got, Pom? Tell us your favorite new book. Whether you got it today or recently. What's your favorite? Eileen, is anyone coloring the awesome dangle pages? Carol, oh, um, if you want to, if there's a link, Eileen, yeah, Carol TMT drew a bunch of, uh, you know, the doodle dangles that hang from your pages and some other things too. If you have a link, Eileen, open links and post it so everybody can go print that out. Carol TMT did some line art, and I think she said everybody can go color it, right, Eileen? Am I correct? Am I correct? Vivi wants a friend. I don't know what that one is, Jane. Is that a color book? Vivi wants a friend. Oh, I don't know. You lost me on that one. I'll try to get crack a lack in here. I'll probably do some splatter for like foam, white foam dots in the background. Maybe we'll do that as soon as I get the background, the main background painted here. Because if you get splatters on anything else, you want to make sure that you you can paint over them. And I'll try to, uh, you know, like kind of cover up where the splatters so I can control where they go. Oh, do, do Drew Maurice by Marie Troll. Okay. They're just on, oh, they're on Twitter. Okay, so you have to follow Carol TMT on Twitter to get her pages. Thanks, Eileen, to get the things that she drew for people to color. No link. Okay. No links. You got to follow Carol TMT. And again, if there's just little white, you know, foam dots here, I'm not trying to paint around them. I'll just go put my own in here in a minute. Hope I'm staying in camera. That's a coloring book where the girls on the fox. Okay. Um, I might have just seen one briefly or something. I don't know that I've seen. Has anybody finished a color finished a page coloring that I don't know I try to keep up as best I can guys but you know it's a lot out there a lot you made your list oh good Sarah for the Society of Idea Collectors I don't know if you came in late today so make sure you you know when I upload the file folder show today that you go get some more ideas you never can have too many ideas, right? <laughs> oh, she has them on Facebook too. Okay. For your list of things. Well, and you know, again, you, you know, if, if you break them out a little bit more specific um, things, you know, that's just so general. Break your list out smaller. You know, tools, for instance, instead of just all things, uh, kitchen things, you know, art things, you know, palettes and paint brushes and paints, rather than just putting them all under things. I mean, you can have both, you can have a list of both, depending on what you're going to use them for. If you're going to do random, selecting of things to draw then all jumbled up like that is good but if you just want to collect lists for yourself of specific items then you probably want to break it out 
So I was like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that that's... I know that there's a, a summer, spring, winter, fall. Who's the uh, artist that does that one again? They're all broke out by a season. Not season like Hannah Carlson seasons, but... That one you're talking about. Okay, I'm going to keep going here, guys. Keep rolling. I want to get as far as I can so I can show some like, you know, foamy backgrounds and other things. Yeah, and you know, you'll have different lists for different things. If you want to like, you know, remember when I asked y'all, y'all name a bunch of things and I'll write it on a list. That was so that we could do random drawings to get ideas to draw from. But it wasn't broke out by anything, you know, too. It was just general things. I'm trying not to turn the color book. I'm trying to keep it going in one direction. And I'm noticing this, so I'm going to say it. On my on my paintbrush, it's starting to get crusty. Like the paint's starting to dry right there. So I'm going to clean my brush every now and then. But make sure to get all the excess water out. But, you know, the paint, especially, I have a fan going. i got lights on. Um, you know, it'll dry. And it gets crusty. And when that happens, then you don't have the... Your, your brush is flared and you won't have the nice lines. I was going to start listing books, coffee mugs, things that were in my line of sight. Yeah, just have a, a random list to pick from like I don't know what to draw so you know you can random generate or just go down your list and you know I'm going to pick the 10th thing or I'm going to pick you know whatever number of thing and go down and just pick random things that's how we get our funny animals combined with you know like I got my samurai um sloth or um uh, not sloth um Oh, what am I thinking? But you combine, you can combine an occupation with an animal, with a thing. And then you'll have, you know, funny combinations that will spark your imagination. That doesn't mean you have to go with exactly what it is. But it gives you sparks of ideas and creative, you know, different ideas. Well, color blue, it's peacock. Peacock teal. And it's it's more teal than it's showing up right here. Let's see if I can. Yeah. I have the I have the lighting set down just a little because if I have it set bright, you can't see the line art. It flashes out the white. It may be better now that I got a bunch of background done. I might be able to um, brighten it up a little here now. So, but it's more, it is a little more on the teal side than it's showing up here. Maybe it, yeah. It looks a little, it looks bluer on camera when I look at the camera or look at the screen. It's, it's more green than it looks on camera. Yeah, then I have marching chickens with bagpipes. Exactly. Lemur. Lemur. That's what I was thinking. A lemur. I have my samurai lemurs. Well, 
we've actually almost got the whole background done here. A sip of coffee. And again, if you see any areas that look a little see through and you don't want it see through, it's not going to really matter if there's, for me on this particular page, if there's any areas because I'm going to splatter, I'm going to um, glow around the dragon, so it's not going to matter that much. But, you know. If you see any areas that look a little thin, then just go back and touch them up. All right, so let me just go right around the dragon here and make sure. Okay, there's one little spot right here. So we got the whole background done that I can see. Oh wait, right here. It's easy to miss, especially in Kirby. He tricks you. <laughs> Kirby's a tricker. <laughs> All right, because, you know, he has hidden things. Okay, I think, actually, right back in here. And again, if you don't get it right exactly what you think where it should be, Kirby is not going to email you and say, You did it wrong! A little koi fish right here or some kind of fish okay CB I'll be here till probably around close to one then we can all move over to Janet's although I will have to go get something to eat I'm usually late to Janet's party it's a different splash right there. Maybe that kind of comes down into a wave point. Okay, now that looks like another, that might be blue too, or this teal color. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do some splattering. This needs a little bit more, another little bit of coverage right in here. Kind of keep your paint kind of thick, even though if you're scrubbing it in, you still, I keep a lot of paint on my brush when I'm doing backgrounds like this, solid. Bye, thanks for stopping in. Okay, so now, let's see. I'm going to get a separate little tray for the watered down white. This is all dry. And I'll put a little bit of...
and you can do this you know I just like to do any kind of splattering before I do well I guess it just depends I guess it depends and I could end up doing splatter on top after the coloring but I want to try to show you as many things as possible so I'm just going to water this down get a thin fluffy brush let's see okay Now let me move everything out of the way and probably uh, let me just get a paper towel here. I'm going to try to just kind of cover up Let's go like this. I don't want I don't want thick splatters on where I'm going to color. Because you can't really color over bumps. Whoops, let's go back down here. I'm zoomed way in. So I'm trying not to get too much on the actual dragon itself. otherwise you're going to be coloring on bumps and I can go back in there and do that later all right so that's probably enough like that now I'm going to dry this with a heat gun hey Beth yeah we've been uh, we've been asking and hoping that you know We've been trying to ask everybody. Everybody in the Gulf Coast that might have been, uh, I mean, I, I kept up with. Uh, Artistic Biker Blade and his, the art family. And of course, you know, CB and my mom, they're in San Antonio. Jamie, APG Jamie, I think she is okay. She's not like right on the coast in, in, in Houston. Okay, so I think that's pretty dry. All right, so what I'll do, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of it now so you can see, although I now no, I probably need to do the washes first. Let me do the washes first. Okay, so I've got my uh, colors here. Uh, I'm going to back out a little just so while we do this part. Still close, but yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a uh, pencil around the edges. But I'm going to go ahead and do the wash of the the him first. So I'm going to water down, and I'm just going to put a little, just so I have a little wet edge here. I'm going to start with him, and it's watered down acrylic paint, and you have to have it washed down enough so that you still see your color book lines through it. Can you see how you can still see through it? So I'm going to start with just a base of the green. And there's a little bit of foamy bits like coming over the top of him too. But you have to do it thin enough and we're going to shade with pencil. So this is just a wash, your initial wash, right? You have to have it thin enough so you still see through it. It's going to add a little more water to the corner there. So I wanted to do this part before I did the white pencil right up next to him because otherwise if I went, like, let's just say I had some white pencil right here 
and then I got the green on it, then it's going to have, which a green glow may be good, but you got to, if you're going to go over that, you got to start with the white and then put green on it. So I'm just kind of looking through here like there's a splash right there. So I'm just going to kind of go behind that splash. And some areas might have a little bit of splash and a little bit of dragon. So it's kind of both. Again, this is just the wash that will build the pencil on top of. That's a leg right there. And after this dries, if you want it a little darker, you know, if you're doing watercolor, neo color, you can do another layer. But don't, you know, you don't want to do too much water because it's the water that is either goes through or will peel your paper. It's the water. So I think that's going to be one of these. Okay, let me add a little bit more water to my paint in my tray. But pencil will go over the top of acrylic. So I can get almost back to pure white with pencil on top of acrylic. All right, so so here's a big splash with his wing is in there somewhere. His wing is in there somewhere, so maybe there'll be a little bit of green behind some of the water, just like maybe peeking out. So there could be a little green in that as well. And then back here is his body again. It's kind of a guess on some of this is what part is part of his body and what's part of the wave. But this is how I'm tackling it. Splash and Dragon. Instead of Smack and Dragon, yeah. Splash and Dragon. <laughs> ah, good one. Good one, Terry. <laughs> it's a little fish right there. Um, just kind of deciding. Some of this could be part of his wings kind of coming down. And, you know, if it, the water's translucent, you might, you know, you're going to probably see some green from him kind of coming through. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the light blue. Let me clean my brush. Water this down. Okay. And now I'm going to go in here in some of the water areas. And again, I want, I'm probably going to want some of this to be white, foamy bits. And then some, and I'll touch some of the green. So they all kind of almost kind of mesh together in some places. And anywhere I'm putting this light blue or the green and I want it white, foamy stuff, I can go back over with white, either with paint or with pencil. OK. 
Y'all able to see that? Hopefully. What do y'all think so far? Let me get a let me get an opinion. Hey Packer Die. I don't know if you left and came back. You like the colors? Yeah, I wanted it a few shades, you know, a couple of shades of the teal, the water splashing over with the white foam on the green dragon. And I'm not being that careful of touching the green or the white, the foam, I'm almost kind of letting them just, you know, it's, I don't care if they're kind of going over each other here. I hope it's showing up. I hope it's showing up. Maybe a little blue in there. And again, it's very watered down so that you still see then he has the random feather. <laughs> it's a little thick there. Because that's the way he rolls. Are you expecting flood in New Orleans, Barb? Barb W., I saw her say something about flood. Using white paint. Um, both. I can use both. White paint and pencil, depending on, you know, if I need more white to get more of a splashy effect. I'm going to try to do as much in pencil, though. So a little bit right up here on the top, a little bit of splash right there. Well, stay safe, Barb, if you're in, in uh, flood zones. Anybody else here that I missed that might be in a flood zone, y'all stay safe. in there with pencil just kind of moving around the whole page it's just the initial wash keeping it light not getting too you know you want to don't lose your detail at this stage Okay, 
and it does buckle a little not that much not terribly not bad enough that I it bothers me but again I think if you're one that you don't like any of it buckling at all then you probably don't want to use any kind of wet anything on any color book but I found that by the time you get done with front and back like let me go back over to this one here um, find a page here that's complete So here in Anamorphia, for example, by the time I finished all this, it might have buckled a little, but by the time I got all the color pencil on top, it's, you know, you can see there's a few pages that are a little wobbly, but look how smooth this one is. See? By the time you color front and back, you really can't see hardly any, but if it bothers you, you know. Oh, I just didn't know if you were in a flood zone, Barb, in Louisiana. Oh, I know it's moving up the coast. Okay, let me dry this, guys. And you want to make sure it's 100% dry before you start going in with pencil. Okay? Because pencil will not work on top of wet paper. Of coffee and let's go in here with maybe and see this is when you need your magazine playground if you've got all this leftover paint I mean I'll probably use some of it but it dries out so fast so you really want to scrape it off into your journal all right so let's see let's move some stuff out of the way here move these extra books And get my pencils out. And then I got a stack of pencils here too that I'm using in other pages that I'm working on. So some of the colors I need are probably right here on the desk. Alright, so let's, see. let's just go with uh, two greens for right now to work on the dragon. On a flood zone that's in city. I don't have okay I missed something on that bar but okay <laughs> alright so I'm going to sharpen these yeah I'll go with this little one here hey Ray yeah I missed I missed something there <laughs> okay let me sharpen my apple green and my, I think this other one's sharp enough. Okay. So I'm going to use chartreuse or lime green, chartreuse and apple green. These two colors for now on my dragon. So I'm going to take the darker apple green and I'm going to start, see where all the shadows are already there for you in the color book? I'm going to start with that. Although I'll probably get back in here with some darker olive green or something. But right now I'm just going to get, get this dark. Bye, May. I'm just going to go with this dark. And now I think I can zoom in some because I'm going to be doing details. So let's zoom in. Let's adjust that. not wanting to focus hang on let me get something for it to focus on again I want the color to look right even though it looks like I got this awesome tan <laughs> 
So even though my skin color is not right, that color is right. Okay. So let's get in here on his little face and start shading. And use the shadows and things in the in the line art to guide you. Thanks for stopping in, May. I appreciate it. And again, you know, you're just going to have to kind of go with where you feel the shadows will be. There's a scales right there, so I'm going to kind of just get a little bit of a color on his scales. And we can go back in there with some darker. So there's that. You're paying attention, Mingle. <laughs> Then we'll go to Janet's and she's going to play with ink. I don't know what that means. She did a recording over the weekend. I haven't had a chance to see that yet. Did some running around and some other things. So, Can y'all see where I'm adding the green? Is it showing up? So if Janet played with ink over the weekend, I missed it. So she may be continuing on with a project, but I don't know what it is. Yet. And I pulled this green to blend if I need any blending. But this is blending pretty f nice without any light um, blend out. But, for instance, like right there, if I wanted to blend that smoother, then I'd take the lighter green and use that to blend with. But so far, we're not really needing that. Are you... You are like the coloring whisperer. <laughs> Usually what I'm whispering is when I'm doing my collage, the details, where I'm imagining a world. And that's when you'll hear me go, shh, 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 shh. And I'm not telling you guys to shush. I'm just telling myself, like, shh, just sit there a second and shh, shh, shh. I'm telling myself that. <laughs> So I'm really just following the contours of the line art there. It's where to shade. You can, you know, can add more wherever you want, but that kind of tells you where to go if you're not sure. And then I'm just kind of putting a light... Um, kind of, you know, light layer right over where all the little scales are because I'll go in there and I don't know, I might want to go I thought maybe even going in there with red but because this is going to be a water one and this one's going to be a fire one, I guess I don't want to put red on this one I mean, if it was just sitting here by itself without a contrasting dragon on the other page then I'd probably put red in him or I could put red in him and some green on him. So they almost look like they're battling. You know. With some similarities amongst themselves. Could do that. 
That's this is when I think about those things when I'm <laughs> doing this, like right now. If we're really quiet, you can hear ASMR from the pencil. Oh, yeah. Shh. Can you hear it? Can you hear the pencil coloring? Uh, a coral color because of the water. I mean the undersea. I'll probably just go with the darker green. Okay, I gotta sharpen again. You're in the AS oh okay. Shh. All right. I'll I'll give it I'll give it a couple ASMR moments. Shh, shh, shh. I don't know that if you can hear you can probably hear the fan blowing behind me more than you could any ASMR. I mean any uh pencil coloring. This one here. Um, work is getting in the way of your watch. <laughs> you miss the white splashes? Did the heat gun make an appearance? Yes, the heat gun dried all the splashes and dried this. Yes. <laughs> Prisma. Prisma said, I interrupted the ASMR with a sneeze. So, Eileen, are you here? What did Janet work on over the weekend with inks? Give me a give me a, a description. Hey Marilyn, good to see you. Girl, you disappear too much. And I know you sleep a lot during the times I'm streaming, but still. Good to see you. I know Scooby. Scoobs is always asking about you, Marilyn. Because Scoobs is not on Twitter. So anytime you're barely around, Scoobs doesn't see you. And she worries. She worries. She didn't use the ink yet. Oh, okay. Why am I thinking she did? Well, I'm going to have to, let's see, what time is it? Okay, I'm going to try to get crack a lack in here so I have time to go grab me something to eat. I guess what I'll do, guys, is because I'm kind of into this one, I will continue. I won't work on it until Wednesday. We'll come back to it on Wednesday. 
Let's do a little bit of darker in there. Maybe his wing is up under there somewhere. We'll continue it on Wednesday if y'all want. Because I want to leave in time to go get something to eat before Janet's show. Because then, if I don't, if I wait till 1, then I'm 15 minutes late into her show. And she's already crack a lacking. And Janet don't wait for no one. <laughs> but I'll get this green done here. And we'll back out. And maybe I'll start a little bit on the scales. was going the patty stream so she put oh she put it off till today ah okay I gotcha all right I thought I missed an over the weekend stream but maybe not so you see I'm just putting a nice little layer along the scales right there a little shadow on the underbelly Okay, I gotta sharpen again. Like the page, thanks, Beth. Continued on Wednesday. Y'all like the idea of saving it to Wednesday, okay. But you can see by doing a wash painting the background and then doing a wash how far we can get with the wash being done you see you just you don't have to spend as I mean there's nothing wrong you can spend weeks on a color book page if you want but you get you can just move along so much quicker if you have washes and and that doesn't matter what kind you use whether it's acrylic wash, watercolor, neo color, whatever kind you're using, you just you can just get so much more done quicker if you have washes done. All right, so now real quick, um, I want to do just a little bit of the um, scales. Okay, here's some ASMR for Prisma. Okay, that's all Prisma. <laughs> all right, so now I got <laughs> that as quiet as I can be. <laughs> all right, so now I got um, olive green, olive green, and I'm gonna start. Let's just go up here on his face because it'll be the most obvious, probably. Okay. <laughs> I hate him his name. So now I'm gonna find the darkest, darkest areas that I would have. And I'm going now another layer. And there's little scales. They're tiny. So I'm almost just doing little, just little marks. Like almost like little dots. And I'm not like trying to get every single one. It's like essence of scale.
and this is the step where it's very high contrast this dark dark against the lightest areas is what makes your pages more dramatic okay um, this is where a lot of people don't take their color books to that level they don't get enough dark darks in there and I'm not trying to tell you don't email me color how you want but I'm just saying if you want a dramatic page you have to have high contrast and that means very dark that doesn't mean black it just means very dark against light and then there's some little scales in here see the difference between this and this this is nice nothing wrong with that but you see the difference that makes and it doesn't take a lot it's just strategic right under those waves it would be really dark see and then again, here's where all the scales start, right in here. Let me get this back fin. See what a difference that makes? Mm -hmm. and, that's why, and that's where most people quit coloring, is on that. They think that's shaded enough. But look at the difference when you go, you know, get that contrast in there. And just a little, just that little bit behind those scales like that. See? Just that little bit. See the difference that makes? And then where all those little scales are, I'm just going to, you know, I'll pick out some that will have, that'll be bigger. But, you know, most of them are just going to be like little dots. There'll be a few in here that are larger. But you don't have to do every single scale. I mean, you can, but you don't need to. Gives you essence of scale. Um, now, I could go in here with dark, dark green, but it... It'll probably come across as almost like black. It depends on how much space you have. Um, if you got, if this is, if the whole color book page was just this and really big, then I would probably even go in there with the darker green. But for this tiny bit, for the, because it's so tiny, this to me is enough. But you know, you don't know until you try. You can go in there and, and experiment. But the bigger the area, then the more colors you can get in there. You know. I kind of like to try to see how much I can do with as few colors as I can. Even a little bit of shading maybe just right in there, you know, on top of those scales. Just to give it a little bit more oomph. So get some little dots and little shapes on top of the scales and then maybe do a little bit of blend here and there do or do you own shows can hardly start ours 
I, I missed something again, Barb. Sorry. Do your own show. Oh, you mean if somebody, when I say don't email me? <laughs> I don't mind questions at all. And, you know, people are coming in and going out of the chat, so they don't know that a question may have already been answered, like right before they came in. <laughs> so I just answer it again. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, this is olive green. This dark green I'm using now. So I'm trying to get as much of it of the scales done here. Well, we have a couple minutes. And then I'll back way out so you can get the whole overview here in a minute. Coloring just has so much benefit, not just the, you know, relaxation of it, but the learning of so many things, of color combinations, of blending, of learning your supplies, whatever kind of supplies you're using. We always, you know, we use a lot of mixed media here. And you just, you just learn so many techniques and, you know, so much by practicing with a color book. And people that don't color or, and I don't meet, I don't personally meet people that look down on it. I guess, you know, I'm, I hang around people that enjoy it and know what, you know, the, uh, the techniques of coloring because they're doing it. Um, so I don't have that negativity in my life. <laughs> but you know, those of us that color, we see all the benefits. Because we've learned so much from, you know, color combinations, blending, and mixed media. All, all of it, you know. So I'm just doing kind of like little bumps on his scale. And then you can just kind of do a little bit of blend. But just kind of keep it subtle. And you can still see a little bit of the lines. Hey, Scoobs. Aw. Marilyn's here, Scoobs. I don't know if you saw her come in. I guess, she, I don't know if she's still here. But Marilyn's... Uh, Scoops is always asking about Marilyn. Got the baby. Just listening. Okay. You're welcome, Teresa. Thanks for stopping in. Mountain Dreamer won one of the little booklet things that we did on part one. In the Society of Idea Collecting. Go out sometime this week. I don't know if I want red nails, red nails on him and green nails on the red one. That might be kind of dramatic. Kind of tie the two together is what I'm thinking. Okay, let's go back up here on this bit. So you can see that just that little bit of dark 
olive green just makes it so much more dramatic And if you want even more highlighted scales, I think I'll wait till Wednesday to show you those. Let me sharpen. <laughs> yeah, she was here, Scoobs. Oh, let me see. Let me. Yeah, there she is. She's here. Get this little hand done here, claw, arm. So like, like, look right here, this little web. See if I just get in there real dark, right under that finger. See how that makes it just pop? Pop in his finger. So I'm thinking, let me get a, let me get a red. Let me sharpen a red here. Nice sharp claws. Just finished your first um, mini magazine idea collecting pl prompt playground pages. And my hands are covered with paint. Don't you love it, Kmore? And then what I'll do on the orange red dragon on this page is I'll do his claws green. They'll tie in together. I think that's all I see as far as his claws. That and, that. and I think I'll do a red eye. And then on this one I'll do a green eye. So can you see the difference here? Here's a good contrast for you. So you can see all the places I had the dark green here, and I can still see a little bit more here. Okay, now look, coming down here where I haven't put any yet. See the difference? We thought that this was nice and colored, which it was, but look what happens when you add the dark green. See? There's the difference. So, so I'm going to head out, guys. I'll leave this for now, so because this will be a good place to pick up on Wednesday, so we can see that comparison again from where we've got the dark green to where we don't have the dark green. And then we see we're going to do the same thing with the water. We're going to go in here with, and um, I don't know if this will be the one. This is peacock or parrot green. It's like a teal green. And we're going to do the same thing. Look. See how you get in there with the darker teal color on the water? You see where we're going with it? Here's with nothing. See how you get in there and start shading with the dark, that contrast. It's that contrast that makes everything just really pop. Steffi, this book is Mythomorphia. I'm going to go ahead and back all the way out now so we can see, take one final look at it for today. 
We'll go back to it on Wednesday and continue. We'll finish it on Wednesday. This side. I don't know. Maybe we'll pick up and do this side too. But so there you go. And again, what we'll do is wherever there's water up in here, we'll get some nice contrast up in there. Okay. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. I'll take a whip picture. I'll take a picture and post it on Twitter as far as like how far we've got so far. I don't post my fit pictures on like on Instagram or Facebook till they're complete. I try to have just my completed pictures, although I have posted a couple on Instagram. But I try to post the completed ones on Instagram and Facebook. But after the show, I'll take a picture like right now and tweet it. So, you're welcome, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody. I'm sure I missed some of you guys that were here. Let me take a quick peruse down. Orla, Linda, uh, Baconeer, AZ. I know I'm missing Barry. Hey, Barry. Uh, Janice. And I said hi to Button. I'm just quickly chatting Natty. Those people that coach Marie that didn't talk that much. Deb, Denise, DeMonte, thanks guys for being here. Jillian, Kamor, Katie to the party, Kay Bird, Kathy, Magda, just scrolling real quick guys. Hey Colleen, Pepper, hey Sharon L, good to see you. Tar Hill, Teresa, anybody else that I missed, thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it. We, we, had quite a crowd we usually do on Mondays you're welcome guys and I hope y'all enjoy it you know if y'all got some of the uh, booklet things for the traveler size notebooks from last episode so I will go and we will see you at Janet Monkey Island Madness is Janet and um, don't forget coffee and art in the morning here every Monday every Wednesday and the occasional Friday 9 a.m. Eastern, and uh, hopefully all they all upload to YouTube so you can watch them there. And uh, we'll see you later, guys. Bye.